Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News. This is the mini version. It's just me <laughs> and half of the dynamic duo. Jackie, how are you? I'm fantastic, Rick. How are you? Pat is traveling. He's in Wisconsin and uh, Ruby was here and she dropped off and is having some technical issues. So but she might show back up again. Depends on whether or not the internet gods are kind to her or not. <laughs> but uh, that's it. You know, you live by the tech and you die by the tech. So for sure, here's what I wanted to kind of chit chat about a little bit, Jackie. And uh, that is Fannie Mae home buying confidence is at an all time low. More than 80% of Americans think it's a bad time to buy a home. And that's what their survey says. 82% believe it's a bad time to buy a house compared to 78% in June. And it was conducted by telephone at around a thousand American adults who make financial decisions in the household during the first three weeks of the month. And it's usually released around the seventh, blah, blah, blah. But on the flip side of that, look at this consumer reports, consumers report improving job security, healthy household finances. So you've got two situations here. One, mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm feeling a little better about my job. That's what the survey is showing. I'm feeling better about my household financing. But I'm not feeling good about going in and buying a house. And I think we know why, because we hit an affordability ceiling, haven't we? Yes, absolutely. And, and there's, there's still a lot of misinformation out there. I'm talking to so many people. I've had several clients that have decided to put their search on hold um not just because of interest rates i mean i've had some that have said you know what i'm not paying seven percent interest rates yet seven percent was the has been the average over the time but couple that with the high prices and how fast we went up and how fast rates went up yes it's an affordability factor but then i also have people and and i never try to convince somebody different i say let me present the facts to you so you can make the best decision for you. I mean, we never push someone to buy or sell. If it's right for you, it's right for you. We'll help you through the process. We just want to give you the right information so you can make the best decisions. There are a lot of people that swear up and down. We have a foreclosure surge coming, um, that we have tons of Airbnbs that are going to be hitting the market. There is a lot of fear factor out there. And it, I am starting to see the effect of that. Yeah, you touched on two really important things. Um, and one was, we're going to have foreclosures. There isn't a scintilla of evidence that that's going to happen. None. I don't, it, it's just, I don't see it. Um, I think in any situation in housing, you can sit back and go, well, we could have this major recession and foreclosures show. Yes, we could, but we're not seeing it right now. We don't see it coming. We don't see a surge of uh, pre-foreclosures, so it's invisible right now. It's not there. So you're mm -hmm. waiting for something that may take years to show up, but it's if. it can't be found no matter where you dig. You can't right. find it. The other thing is this, this uh, thought, and it's gaining more and more steam that, oh, Airbnbs are inflate, deflating, and people are going to dump them on the market. Well... I, I want to, there's a difference between the company Airbnb and you having a short-term rental. Mm -hmm. The company Airbnb had a bad earnings report. That has nothing to do with Jackie's Airbnb. You could be booked full and doing great. And their business model had a hiccup. Right. It's earnings, right? So Cromford touched on it a little bit today. And it says over the last two years, average occupancy is reported to have dropped from 60%. Did you know that that was the average occupancy for Airbnbs for mm -mm. 365 days? Nope. 60%. I did not now, know that. Now, if you're a long-term rental and you're only booked 60%, that's a bad number. Right. But for Airbnb, that's a good number. Guess how much it's gone down? I'm going to put you on the spot. 6%. You're pretty close. It went down 4%. It's 56% now. <laughs> that's it. It's a negative trend, but, people but hear hardly 56. a catastrophic proportion. So. Yeah. So I'm actually taking my first Airbnb listing. And the, and I asked him, I thought, okay. And But then the agent told me that's referring him over to me. He's had 70 to 80% occupancy this year. 
He's got somebody yeah. in there right now until September 10th. So I asked him, if you've got such great occupancy, why is it that you want to sell this Airbnb? Because, because I moved to Florida from New York and I want to move all my investments to Florida so that I can self-manage them. I'm like, okay, had nothing to do. His occupancy was great, 70 to 80%. Well, there's also that dark cloud hovering over when it comes to regulation debt that a lot of these cities are trying to clamp down and they may, some of them may get very successful at that. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're in a condo or if you're in a neighborhood that's got CCNRs, you know, an HOA. So those are going to put some pressure on you. But I was also kind of commenting yesterday when somebody mentioned that and I go, well, what if you're in a neighborhood that doesn't have an HOA and everybody else that had HOAs can no longer do a short-term rental? You're kind of sitting in the catbird seat. Yeah, for sure. There went your competition. And and uh, Michael Orr of the Cromford Report said, um, uh, saying here that there's actually been an increase in listings in Scottsdale. And it says we currently have 49.8% more active rental listings than we did 12 months ago. About 800 of them are in Scottsdale and their asking rent is $4,380. Wow. This time last year, there were only 517 with an average rent of 4290. The average is going up because those with higher end rate are staying active longer, not because the rent is increasing. So what he's saying is that we're starting to see some homes showing up in Scottsdale that are furnished and being converted to long-term rentals, mm -hmm. but we're not seeing them hit the resale market. No. So maybe it's a phase. Maybe right. they're going to do this in stages. Okay, I, I'm a little nervous about Airbnb, so I'm going to make it a long-term rental. If that doesn't work, then I guess I'll sell it. But housing keeps driving inflation. Relief is coming. Um, that's interesting. So, Rick, you housing know what I don't agree with? What's that? Um, is, is how they do the survey with the rents. And it's such a heavy factor. And they're literally just calling people saying if you were going to rent your house, what would you rent it for? It makes yeah. no sense to me. Saying that shelter inflation was responsible for 90% of the computer, compu consumer price indexes, 0.2% monthly gain. So it's saying, you know, we're at 3.2 versus 3.0 and 90% of that 0.2 blip was housing. Now, uh, it's easy for them to track resales and prices have been going up. So um, I don't think anybody looks at this, you know, the central bank doesn't look at this and go, okay, let's crimp housing a little bit more because there's more things that they have to consider beyond that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'm running into now that I'm out of state and I had some friends uh, come over and visit for about an hour the other day and, and, uh, and they were talking about Arizona and, and I've heard it every time. Well, you guys are out of water. <laughs> I know. I keep hearing it too. You're out of water. Yeah. I'm and not... there's there's so many headlines out there about that. And I'm still seeing YouTubers do that. And it's just crazy. It's like we got 100 years to figure out how to make up for 4%. And I'm yeah. sure in the next 10 years, they will have come up with a resolution for that. And what people don't realize, I've, I've had numerous people saying, oh, my gosh, I heard that all the building has stopped. I'm like, yes, I no, heard... it hasn't. <laughs> yeah, there it's was not. a couple of camps camp next to us when i was out camping by the ocean and she goes her her daughter wants to move to phoenix and she, she can't do that they're out of water they've stopped <laughs> building i said you read that new york times article didn't you <laughs> she's well there's global warming i said okay you know i i said well we're only four percent short of our hundred year goal well, she eventually came over and said do you have a business card <laughs> so but when i look at the cromford market index which is a leading indicator um, we're like to use Pat's term, we're just muddling along. It's, it's not going up. It's not going down. It's going down slightly, like from a peak here of 164 down to 161, which is nothing in this index, but it is, it is flat. So it's not going this way, going up. That's for sure. <laughs> like we did from the first of the year. Now, will we plummet down to here? I don't see anything that will make us do that unless there's a surge of inventory and you know we beat that to death but i don't see it here's an interesting one jackie 
and I looked up expired listings year to date. And these are an expired listing is how would you describe an expired listing? They ran their course six months, some are nine months, some are a year, but typically six months and they just didn't sell the house. Yeah. They said we, we tried and it didn't sell. So, and the reason it, it didn't sell are numerous, but we're trending way higher than last year, except back here, when you look at towards the end, when rates went up, this is where everybody jumped in right here and said, all right, I got to get my equity while I got it. And then they mm -hmm. found out they couldn't. So we had these record amounts of expired listings on January 1st, 2022. It was a well, pretty high number. What would be interesting is to see where those are, because as you know, it's very micro market. The market is different everywhere from, I mean, you can go five blocks south and the market's completely different than it is right here. So it'd be really interesting if there was a way to hone in and look at where those expired listings are. Are they in areas like, for instance, Buckeye? Buckeye's got all the new builds they're competing against. And so are they pricing competitive with the new builds? And so they're not selling because there's somebody's going to go buy a new build. They're getting a brand new house at a 5% interest rate versus paying 7% at, you know, so it would be, I, I would be very curious where those are. Yeah, me too. I think uh, maybe I can pull a search and, and look at expired listings if I were just going to MLS and see if it pulls anything up for me. But it, it's, uh, I, for the most case, it really is, you just price too high for too long. Mm -hmm. um, or your home needed more work than you anticipated. And uh, you had a couple contracts fall out. So you took it off the market. Canceled listings are kind of the same way. Although there's a lot of different reasons why listings can get canceled. Like a life change thing came up. So I can't sell right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people, people cancel. So, but getting back to the sentiment, I mean, it's really boils down to affordability and it looks like everything that I've read and I've seen. And if you go back and compare it to the seventies, um, it could take five years for things to kind of lean towards more balance where either wages start coming up with a combination of prices, real prices starting to come down to where you have that meet in the middle moment. And in mm -hmm. other words, the payment coming down because the payment right now is driven by the high interest rate and the high prices. So if you have prices coming down, let's just say 10%, but we get, a full point and a half improvement on interest rates that can change the direction of the housing market quite. Absolutely. Quite fast. So, um, and I think that's probably a more likely scenario, but it's not going to happen anytime soon based on this inflation data. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't go up, we didn't go down. We're kind of hanging right there. Uh, that, that probably tells the central bank that they can stay where they're at, but it certainly doesn't tell them that it's time to, move down. And that's what the bond market's looking at now. The bond market is not looking at it and going, okay, we can, we can loosen this up a little bit. There's still a flight to safety. They're, they're still rushing towards, towards bonds. And, uh, and we're not seeing any relief in those, uh, interest mm -hmm. rates for mortgages. That's for sure. So I think, um, you know, we never know what's going to show up and spike, inventory, but I don't see anything out there that says, okay, in October, we're going to see more listings. <laughs> if we nope. look at where our listings are now, if I can pull this up for us and uh, pull up our active listings weekly, um, you can see again, it's just a straight line flat, nothing out there. It's not going to, it's not going to do this again. Because mm -mm. uh, there isn't a lot of a floor left. So if you get over here to November, then I think I think we're going to see this, and then we're going to see this. Mm -hmm. But that's just seasonal. But I don't see anything between now and the end of the year that's going to say, "Okay." I don't see that coming. No, the only thing I do see is if we get some kind of an adjustment in rates. But I, that's not going to happen fast. If we got an adjustment in rates, this could kind of start doing this 
Mm -hmm. But an adjustments in rates is going to take our seven day moving average of 2,700 contracts and putting it back up to 3,400. And mm -hmm. as the inventory comes on, they're going to go away. And again, takes me back to those short term rentals. If you list your short term rental right now, I'll tell you what, it's gone because it's yep. such a nice product. So I think people really need to let go of, and I don't think there's a bunch of people out there waiting, thinking I'm waiting till all these short-term rentals show up. I just think <laughs> it's, it's chatter right now. Yeah. And well, you know, I look at these listings all the time. I look at what's available for short-term rentals and I, and you know, and we listed one just a few months ago and they're great products. So when they come on, um, they're not going to pile up and increase uh -huh. inventory. People are going to go, Oh my gosh, I got to have that house. And, right. uh, and so there's also a lot of people, I know we had somebody comment uh, this morning on my channel and said, Hey, look, here's my situation. I bought a place in Palm Springs back in 2012. I think he said, and he goes, and now I can sell it and I can come over there and I can pay cash. So I don't really care where interest rates are. Right. There's more of those folks out there than, you know, Yep, for sure. So they don't believe in rate lock. They don't have to. Mm -mm. So, Has no uh, effect. but you also have to be able to sell that thing for a million one too. You know, who's going to buy your property out there for a million? They might be the ones concerned with rate lock. So now we also have the producer price indexes coming out, I think tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Call that the PPI. And that's how much is it costing people who make things for their materials, produ producer price index, you know, bread, if flour went up, that gets factored into sugar. Um, so that's going to be an interesting to watch because I think that from what I've seen, I, I'm suspecting that may be a little higher as well, but not by much, probably not enough to move the market. So we'll see what happens, huh? It's going to be interesting. I wanted to pull up the um, chart that Cromford had that showed where you're at in the cycle. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't find it yesterday in my files, but uh, I think, I think we're, I think one of them is skepticism. Skep that's what I was going to say. That's where we are. Yeah. So see what's after skepticism acceptance. Yes. But I think we actually hit that and then we backtracked a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's never. That's a, what it feels like. Yeah, it's never a solid science. That's for no, sure. So no. But, uh, well, Jackie, you take on the day and have a great weekend. And uh, we will see the rest of the gang here again, maybe perhaps next week. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rick. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye.